We have to send a great big thank you to St. John the Evangelist who recorded these words. He's the only one, as you know, who recorded this long dissertation of Jesus at the Last Supper. Very personal relationship between the Father and Jesus. And, and he's praying out loud, and John is... Well, you know, I can't remember. If, if, if someone gives me a whole conversation, I can't remember it. But we have to realize in the writing of the scriptures, the tradition was oral tradition, oral remembering, oral recording. So when the teacher, in this case Jesus, is teaching, the students, and, and we have this from um, the prophet Isaiah, um, he gave me a well-trained ear. That's what that means, that the students had to listen and memorize what the teacher said. They weren't writing it down. They didn't have notebooks. They, they, there was writing, of course. The scribes wrote the scriptures themselves. But in the actual events, as they un occurred, there was no somebody, you know, texting, and this is what Jesus just said, or writing down what Jesus just said. There's no emails. So they had to remember. Now, I would find that difficult. I can't remember what I did yesterday. But I would find that difficult. But we're not trained that way. If we were trained to not see any words written, but to remember what the teacher told us, we'd remember it and we'd be able to record it. So with that in mind, that's what happens. And I say tonight because that's when this happened. It was the night of the Last Supper that Jesus is given this relationship with him, his father, more revelation, their, their understanding. You realize how much theology is packed into this long dissertation of Jesus at the Last Supper? He's revealing, I'm sending the advocate, that's the Holy Spirit, the one who walks alongside you. That's what avocato means, attorney. We talked about that before. Uh, he reveals, I'm sending the advocate, yet I'm coming to you. You and I are one, and I'm returning to you as I was before the formation of the world. And as it continues, the Holy Spirit will remain with you. So Jesus is telling us, on your journey of life, I'm with you, my spirit's with you, and my father's with you because we're one. And in his glorified state, he's going to rejoin the father where he was before the world began. It's interesting because you open up the first book of the Bible, Genesis, in the beginning was the word, excuse me, in the beginning God created. You open the first book of John's gospel and he, he reminds us, of Genesis, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus. So they were together, the God the Father. It's, it's, um, it doesn't make logical sense because we're, we're concrete in our thinking. But if we get into the realm of faith and theology and spirituality, God is a spirit. That spirit is one who reveals, I'm going to say itself, in three persons, three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. And nobody named those persons except Jesus. Before Jesus came on the scene, you would never say, quote, God. You, you, you'd never say it as a Jew. Jews don't even write the word God. The, it's the equivalent of our G, underscore blank, and then D. That's how they write it in Hebrew. So you don't, they don't even say the word God. But they gave him titles. Yahweh, um, El Shaddai, uh, Lord. So they gave God titles, the Jews, and only in Jesus do you and I know that we can call him Father. They referred to him as a shepherd before in the Old Testament and, and Father of the people. But Jesus reveals to us as we journey our lives, in our lives, that you can talk to God the Father, you, and the Holy Spirit is in you, to give you the energy to talk to God, your Father. Don't forget, Jesus makes his Father our Father. And he, he reveals the, rela the close relationship. You're in me, and I'm in you, and they're in me. Well, it sounds a little like repetitious, but it's not. It's very, very beautifully uh, planned out. He's talking to the Father, and he's reminding his disciples, 
at the Last Supper, I'm in the Father, the Father is in me, and you guys who have been sent to me by the Father are in me, so therefore you guys who are sent to me by my Father are in God. And as you journey through life, walk with God. In any way you want to refer to God as Father, as Son, as Spirit. Now, Paul knew that. Now, Paul writes his letters, um, oh, probably 30 years after the, the resurrection and all that. Um, but he received the inspiration from Jesus himself while the apostles are still alive. So within a few years of Jesus' ascension, Paul comes on the scene. And he's hit by God. He's, he's <laughs> literally hit. He was thrown off his horse with a bolt of lightning. So he's really hit by God. But he was hit by God in a spiritual way too, to get to know God. Why God chose him, no idea. He was a big persecutor of the church. He was a, a, a Pharisee. He was an educated Jew. He hated the Christians. But God brought him in. So you can be surprised who God works for. So don't never, don't ever criticize somebody you don't like if they're going to church or, or don't ever criticize someone who is a bad person in public but does something good. God chooses his own. So we can't, we can't criticize. It says it's his business. So John, me, Paul was inspired by God in Jesus Christ. So he, he gave us his message and he, and he told the Jews, I'm inspired to go forward by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit more than once warned me you're going to be persecuted when you go here and proclaim God's word. So I don't know where I'm going, but the next step of my life, I know is God with, is with me. And I go with God's grace. Confidence that he lived and died for. And that's our message for today. To walk with God's grace, to have Jesus in us all the time. Um, Jesus says toward the end of his dissertation there at the Last Supper, I will no longer be in the world, but they, all of us, are in the world while I'm coming to you. And while he comes to the Father, he sends the Son to us, the Spirit to us. So we hold on to the Holy Spirit as we go about our business, as we eat lunch with friends, as, as we go on the beach, as we walk in the park, as we, as we gather in our own families, in our own houses. As we have conflicts in our family, don't forget that too. We, 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 we gotta be realistic. We're not saints, we're people. And people have ups and downs and people have good days and bad days. And sometimes people who live with each other, husbands, wives, children, parents, have problems with each other. Personality disorders, personality defects. Um, imagine Jesus being there right with you when you're having a problem with your relative. He's promised to be with us. He promised to journey with us. It might temper our mouths. It might temper our reactions. And I'm talking specifically family and friends, okay? Of course it applies to the outside world as well. But Jesus walks with us. So when we have a problem in our lives, we can't just wing it. Now we've got to turn to Jesus. And it's wonderful. And I hear stories from you. I hear stories about how many of us have turned to Jesus in a moment of need. Yesterday I got an email from uh, Wayne, New Jersey, where I used to serve uh, the church Annunciation, that a, a man who used to come to the early, early Mass, um, rarely did I celebrate it, but it was early Mass, George Hallis died. He was 90 years old. He was involved with the Knights. He was involved with the, the parish. And, and I think of George and his, he's a ton of kids, like five or six kids. And I think of that family as they together pull together to mourn George. But yet I'm sure, and we never discussed this, I'm not d divulging anything. I'm sure in the years that they grew up, there were conflicts. But they prayed over those conflicts. They always returned to their father's house with those conflicts, the church. So it's a good example to pray for those who have gone before us and ask them to give us 
the strength to go through our own, our own lives, but also to pray to the Holy Spirit always, and Jesus always walking with us as we go through life, as we experience ups and downs, accomplishments and failures. We are called to here today to be nourished by the Word and the Eucharist of Jesus, Jesus God's Son. There's a reason for that, because we need Him to walk with us in life.